السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Today inshallah we're going to solve Cambridge exam May June 2024 paper 21 Let's start it Question 1 A gas is heated The pressure is kept constant So heating a gas that means we will increase the temperature While the pressure remains constant Which statement describes the behavior of the particle in a gas Of course by increasing temperature The kinetic energy of the partic particles will increase So the particle will move faster When they move faster they will become further apart That's why statement A is wrong becomes closer this is a wrong statement and c and d are wrong because they are not moving slower when we increase the temperature the particle move faster and become further apart so the correct answer is b question two a mixture of ice and water is left to stand and the ice melts which row describes what happened as the ice melting what happened to the temperature of the mixture and what happened to the energy of the particles we know that during melting and boiling the, the temperature remains constant so we will choose that the temperature of the mixture stays the same and about the energy of the particles the energy is used to overcome the attractive forces between the solid which is ice to change into liquid so the correct answer is d question three Hydrogen chloride has uh, MR of hydrogen chloride is 36.5, which is released at point B in the apparatus shown. Universal indicator turns red after 38 seconds. We have another gas, which is sulfur dioxide. The mass of sulfur dioxide is 64. So we want to know what is the color of the universal indicator after releasing sulfur dioxide gas and what is the time taken to change the color. Because sulfur dioxide is acidic oxide, so the color of universal indicator, of course, will change to red. And because the mass of sulfur dioxide is greater than the mass of hydrogen chloride, so, of course, it will take higher time or more time to change red color. Because slow, a higher mass means slower rate of diffusion, so it will take longer time to change to red color. So the color is red, and the time taken is greater than the time needed for for hydrogen chloride and the correct answer is D question 4 four statements about atoms are listed the center of an atom is positively charged yes the center is a nucleus and contain protons and neutrons because neutrons has no charge so the charge of the center or charge of the nucleus is positive protons and electrons are located in the nucleus of course wrong Elect electrons are uh, spinning around the nucleus they are not inside the nucleus protons and electron have the same mass of course this is wrong most of the mass of the atom is in the nucleus this is correct the mass of the atom is the mass of the proton and neutrons which are located inside the nucleus so only one and four are correct and the correct answer is b Question 5. The electronic configuration of two elements are given, as we can see element L and element M. Which row identify the group number of, sorry, the group number and the period number of element L and element M? For element L, it has four shells, so it is in period 4, and it has one electron in the outer shell, so it is in group 1. So for element L, we will choose group 1 and period 4. For element M, it has 4 electrons in the outer shell, so it is in group 4. And because it has only 3 shells, so it is in period 3. Now we're going to choose group 4 and period 3. The correct answer is A. Question 6. Which statement explain why isotopes of the same element have the same chemical properties of course isotopes have the same chemical properties because they have the same electronic configuration and the same number of electrons in the outer shell so the answer is c question seven which statement about potassium chloride are correct it conducts electricity when solid because the ions are free to move potassium chloride is ionic compound so it cannot conduct electricity when solid state the ions are not free to move it has high melting point because the strong intermolecular forces, of course, again, it's ionic compounds, so no intermolecular forces. Uh, it 
uh, its structure is a giant lattice of alternating positive and negative ions. This is correct. And the, it is soluble in water. And these are the two correct statements. The answer is D. Question 8. How many electrons are shared in one molecule of nitrogen and in one molecule of ethene? In one molecule of nitrogen and two, the two nitrogen atoms are uh, bonded by a triple bond. So we have six shared electrons because he's asking how many electrons shared. And for one molecule of ethene, we have four electrons shared between the two carbons and two electrons between each carbon hydrogen bond so we have two multiplied by four eight electrons plus four between the two carbons we have a total of 12 electrons so the correct answer is c what is the total number of electrons in one molecule of ammonia here he is not asking about the number of shared electrons he's asking about the total number of electrons so we will count the total number in one molecule of ammonia Here, ammonia form three bonds with three hydrogen and still have one lone pair. So we will multiply two by four. We have eight electrons and another two electrons in the first shell of nitrogen because nitrogen have seven electrons, two, five. So the five electrons in the second shell are one, two, three, plus two here are five. They are making three bonds. So the total will be eight electrons and the first shell has also two electrons so the total number of electrons in one molecule of ammonia will be 10 electrons question 10 when heated copper oxide cu copper oxide react with ammonia 8.5 grams ammonia react with an excess copper oxide to produce 26.4 grams of copper what is the percentage yield of copper in this reaction so first we have to know that copper oxide in excess 8.5 grams of ammonia so you will calculate the number of moles of ammonia mass divide mr of ammonia which is 17 so number of moles is 0.5 then from the ratio between ammonia and copper it is the ratio is 2 to 3 so number of moles of copper will be 0.5 times 3 divide 2 number of moles of copper will be 0.75 and from the number of moles of copper, we can calculate the mass of copper produced from this reaction by multiplying the number of moles by the relative atomic mass of copper, which is 64. So the mass of copper produced is 48 grams. And because we have only 26.4 grams produced from copper, so the percentage yield will be 26.4 divided 48 times 100. It will be 55 percent so the answer is c what is the empirical formula of ethanoic acid ethanoic acid is ch3 co o h so the molecular formula of ethanoic acid c2 h4 o2 and the molecular formula is the simplification of this formula by dividing by two so it will be c h2 o this is the empirical formula of acenoic acid, so the correct answer is B. Question 12. Magnesium chloride contains magnesium ions and chloride ions. How many chloride ions are present in two moles of magnesium chloride? We know that one mole of magnesium chloride contains Avogadro's constant of magnesium chloride formula. So when we have two moles, we will have two times Avogadro of the formula and because each formula contain two chloride ions so again we will multiply by two another two to get the number of chloride ions so it will be 2.408 times 10 to the power of 24 and the answer is C. Question 13. A metal object is electroplated with copper. One electrode is a metal object and the other electrode is copper the electrolyte is aqueous copper sulfate which row shows the ionic half equation of the reaction at the anode and the observation of the electrolyte 
of course we are electroplating an object with copper so the anode will be made from copper this will be the anode and here at the cathode we will have the object to be plated this is at the cathode and the electrolyte is copper 2 sulfate so add the anode copper uh, copper metal of the anode ionized to produce copper ion 2 solution so the equation at the anode will be copper metal produce copper ions plus two electrons and what happened to the solution the copper sulfate solution already has a blue color the color of the solution will stay the same because copper ions removed from the solution and deposit as copper metal on the cathode is continuously replaced by the ionization of the anode by the same rate that's why the blue color doesn't change so the answer is d question 14 which statement about electrolysis is correct chemical energy is converted to electrical energy this is of course wrong electrons flow through the electrolyte no ions through uh, can flow through the electrolyte ionic compounds are broken down by electricity so the answer is c question 15 the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen releases 486 kilojoule per mole of energy here we have the equation the bond energy of hydrogen hydrogen is 436 kilojoule per mole and for hydrogen oxygen is for 464 kilojoule per mole so uh, our formula is the energy needed to break the bond minus the energy released from forming new bonds equal to the delta h so because this reaction is exothermic and the energy released so we have to use 486 with a negative sign then the energy absorbed to break the bond here we have two hydrogen hydrogen bonds so you multiply 436 by 2 plus the double bond oxygen oxygen minus the energy formed the energy released when the bonds formed in the products we have four oh bonds so we will multiply it by four we will uh, remove this part here by positive sign so we will get that the uh, energy absorbed to break the bonds between hydrogen and hydrogen and the double bond of oxygen equal to 1370 so the value for only the oxygen double bond oxygen will be 498 kilojoule per mole and the answer is c which reaction pathway diagram shows the reaction that will give out the most energy? Give out the most energy, that means the reaction is exothermic. And for the, an exothermic reaction, the uh, energy profile diagram has a reactant uh, at higher energy level than the products. So here we have two graphs with the reactant at higher energy level graph a and graph d and because we have larger energy difference between the reactant and the product in graph a so graph a releases the most energy first it is exothermic second it has much higher difference uh, uh, of energy between the reactant and product than uh, graph d so the answer is a question 17 when calcium carbonate is heated strongly a gas given off which word describes this change of course this is a thermal decomposition reaction and it is a chemical change it is not exothermic it is endothermic and it is not a physical change and of course it is not a reduction so the answer is a question 18 powdered magnesium carbonate is added to excess dilute hydrochloric acid a total volume of gas produced measured over time here we have the graph where the total volume of gas against time the experiment is repeated but the concentration of hydrochloric acid is doubled we have to remember that hydrochloric acid is excess from the beginning we just increase uh, or double the concentration all other conditions are kept the same which statement about the second experiment are correct the final volume of gas is 360 centimeter cube 
let's check the final volume here the final volume of the gas is about 180 so because we have limited amount of magnesium carbonate when magnesium carbonate used up or finished there will be no gas produced so we will have the same amount of or the same volume of gas produced in the second experiment because uh, the limiting reagent is calcium carbonate the reaction finished before 90 seconds this is correct because increasing the concentration will increase the rate of reaction so of course we will reach to the uh, the volume expected volume of carbon dioxide in a shorter Time. the activation energy of the reaction is lower this is of course wrong increasing the concentration will not affect uh, the activation energy so only two is correct and the answer is d question 19 which statement explain why increasing the temperature change the rate of a chemical reaction increasing the temperature increase the rate of chemical reaction Number one, increases the activation energy. This is wrong. Chemist, uh, temperature has no effect on the activation energy. Increases the frequency of collision between the reacting particles. This is correct because when we increase the temperature, the kinetic energy increases and the particle move faster, so they will collide more frequent. Increase the kinetic energy of the particle. This is correct. Increase the number of particles per unit volume. This is, of course, wrong. So we have only two and three are correct, and the answer is C. Question 20. Hydrogen is made by reacting carbon with steam. The equation for the reaction is shown. Carbon with steam to form hydrogen and carbon monoxide. The forward reaction is endothermic. Which row describes the change in pressure and temperature will both shift the position of equilibrium toward right? First, the forward reaction is endothermic so to shift the equilibrium toward right we have to increase the temperature because endothermic reaction is favored by high temperature so we will choose for temperature increase because increasing temperature will shift the equilibrium to the endothermic side which is the forward side for the pressure we have one gas molecule on the left side and two moles or two molecules on <clears throat> the right side to make the equilibrium shift toward the right, we have to decrease the pressure because the right side has higher number of moles. So our answer will be decreasing the pressure and increase the temperature. So the answer is B. Question 21. Which row shows the condition used to conversion of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide in the contact process? Condition of contact process 450 degrees Celsius to atmospheric pressure and the catalyst vanadium oxide so the answer is b question 22 the equation for the reaction of magnesium with carbon dioxide is shown magnesium plus carbon dioxide to form magnesium oxide and carbon which statement about this reaction is correct magnesium is oxidized and carbon dioxide is reduced of course magnesium gain oxygen so magnesium oxidized and carbon dioxide loses oxygen so carbon dioxide reduced magnesium reduced this is wrong magnesium and carbon dioxide both oxidize also wrong magnesium and carbon dioxide neither oxidized or reduced so uh, this is also wrong the correct answer is a question 23 Chlorine displaces bromine from aqueous potassium bromide, the ionic equation of the reaction as shown. Which statement about this reaction is correct? As we can see here, bromide ion loses electron. The oxidation, cha uh, oxidation number change from minus 1 to 0. So losing electron is oxidation. So bromide ion oxidized to bromine and the oxidizing agent is chlorine so chlorine is the oxidizing agent and for chlorine the oxidation state change from zero to minus one so the oxidation state decreases that means chlorine is reduced into chloride ions and the reducing agent is the bromide ions So let's check which answer is correct. Bromide ions are oxidized, as we said here, and because it loses electron, 
and the oxidation state change from minus 1 to 0 that means bromide ion lost electrons and it get oxidized so the answer is b question 24 which gas is produced when ammonium chloride is warmed when uh, with aqueous sodium hydroxide this is the test for ammonium ions warming any ammonium salt with sodium hydroxide will produce ammonia gas so the answer is a question 25 which equation represent a solution of ethanoic acid in water ethanoic acid is a weak acid so you first search for a reversible arrow because um, weak acids are partially ionized then the um, formula of ethanoic acid ch3 cooh which is ionized to produce protons and the negative ethanoate ion which is ch3 coo so the correct answer is c question 26 four statement about the reaction of oxides with dilute hydrochloric acid and with aqueous sodium hydroxide uh, the oxides that can react with hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide are amphoteric oxides the oxide that can react only with hydrochloric acids are the basic oxides and the oxide that can react only with sodium hydroxide are the acidic oxide so number one aluminium oxide aluminium oxide is amphoteric so it can react with both hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide so statement one is correct calcium oxide react with both no calcium oxide is acidic oxide so it will react only with dilute hydrochloric acid copper oxide is a basic oxide so it will react only with dilute hydrochloric acid but not with sodium hydroxide so statement three is correct sulfur dioxide doesn't react with hydrochloric acid or sodium hydroxide this is wrong because sulfur dioxide is acidic oxide so it will react with sodium hydroxide we have statement one and three are correct so the answer is b question 27 which statement about the elements in period three of the periodic table is correct aluminium is non-metal this is of course wrong Argon is in group 8 and has 8 electrons in the outer shell. Of course, this is correct. Magnesium is in group 2, has 3 electrons in the outer shell. This is wrong. Sulfur is a metal, is also wrong. So the answer is B. Question 28. Which row describes the structure of group 7 elements and the trend in their reactivity down the group? All group 7 elements are diatomic molecules, so we'll choose diatomic and for the reactivity reactivity decreases down the group so the answer is b question 29 some information about four elements p q r and s is shown in the table here we have the melting point density and color of the chloride salt which element are transition metals we know that transition metals have high density high melting and boiling point and also form colored compound so we have here for uh, element p high melting point and high density and the compound which is chloride salt is pink also for r we have high melting point high density and colored chloride salts so we will choose p and r s is not correct because we have a very low melting point q is not correct because the compound is white so the only correct uh, elements are P and R, so the answer is A. 30. Propanoic acid is a carboxylic acid. It has similar chemical properties to ethanoic acid, so it's a weak acid and has same chemical reaction of ethanoic acid. Which statement are correct? Propanoic acid is weaker than dilute hydrochloric acid. Yes. It is weak acid. It is similar to ethanoic acid. We know that all organic acids are weak acids. Propanoic acid is partially ionized in aqueous solutions. This is also correct. Same as ethanoic acid. Propanoic acid reacts with ethanol to form propyl ethanoate. This is, uh, of course, wrong name of the ester. If propanoic acid reacts with ethanol, the ester will be ethyl propanoate. So statement three is wrong. Only one and two are correct and the answer is b question 31 
iron rusts in the presence of oxygen and water. Which statement about rusting of iron are correct? Anhydrous iron to oxide is produced when iron rusts. This is wrong. We know that the rust is hydrated iron 3 oxide. Iron rust more quickly when it is attached to a piece of zinc. This is, of course, wrong. Zinc um, is used to protect iron from rusting in a process known by galvanizing. So statement two is also wrong. Coating the iron with plastic prevent the iron from rusting. This is a method of prevention called barrier method. So this is correct. Iron loses electron when it rusts. Rust is an oxidation. Oxidation is a loss of electron. So three and four are correct and the answer is D. Question 32. An iron nail is added to aqueous copper 2 sulfate and a different iron nail is added to aqueous magnesium sulfate. So we have iron nail which is made from iron. The first equation or the first uh, uh, experiment it will react with copper sulfate and in the second experiment it will react with magnesium sulfate because iron is less reactive than magnesium so it cannot displace magnesium from magnesium sulfate there is no reaction and no observation or we can say no change and because iron is more reactive than copper it will displace copper from copper sulfate so we can see copper as a brown solid form it and this will be our observation in the second reaction so when iron is added to copper sulfate the iron is coated with brown solid but when the iron nail added in aqueous magnesium sulfate there will be no reaction which statement is correct copper atoms are oxidized more easily than magnesium atoms oxidation means loss of electrons and because magnesium is more reactive than copper so magnesium lose this electron more readily and oxidize more easily than copper atoms so statement one is wrong copper atoms are reduced reduction is gain of electrons and all metal atoms lose electron to form positive ions so statement b is wrong iron atoms are oxidized more easily than copper atoms because iron is more reactive than copper so iron of course lose electron and oxidize more readily and more easily than copper so uh, C is correct. Uh, for the last one, iron atoms are reduced more easily. Again, uh, iron is a metal, so metal atoms loses electron. It is uh, oxidized, not reduced. So statement D is wrong. Only C is correct. Question 33. Which pollutant lead to the deoxygenation of water in bones and lakes? A deoxygenation of water is happened by fertilizers when fertilizers washed away by heavy rain from the soil to the water in bones and lakes it causes overgrowth of algae on the surface of the water and this will block the sunlight uh, from the aquatic uh, plants underwater so this aquatic plant cannot make photosynthesis this lead to decrease in the oxygen level in the water what is called deoxygenation. This process is called eutrophication and it causes deoxygenation of water due to the presence of fertilizers. So statement A is correct. Fertilizers containing nitrates and phosphate causing deoxygenation of water in bones and lakes. Question 34. Which statement identifies sample of water as pure? Test for purity of water is by measuring the boiling point. If the boiling point is water, of water is 100, so water is pure. The answer is D. Question 35. Oxides of nitrogen are produced by car engines. In the catalytic converters, oxides of nitrogen are removed by reacting them with compound X. Which road describes the type of reaction oxides of nitrogen undergo and which row identify compound X? Of course, compound X is carbon monoxide that reacts with nitrogen dioxide in the catalytic converter to form nitrogen gas and carbon dioxide gas. A catalytic converter remove the toxic gases or sorry, change the toxic gases like nitrogen dioxide and carbon monoxide to normal gases present in air just like a nitrogen and carbon dioxide so nitrogen dioxide convert to nitrogen and this is of course loss of oxygen 
is reduction. So the type of reaction that nitrogen dioxide undergoes is reduction. And compound X, as we've just said, it is carbon monoxide. So the answer is D. Question 36. What is the disadvantage of producing ethanol using catalytic addition of steam from ethene? The disadvantage that the process uses a non-renewable material, which is ethene, because ethene comes from crude oil and crude oil is a non-renewable resource. The answer is C. Question 37. Which statement about polymer BET is correct? Uh, BET is a polyester, so it can be broken down into its monomer and repolymerized. This statement is correct. It is not addition. Polyester is a condensation polymer. It is not polyamide. It is polyester. It is made from amino acid, of course, wrong. Polyester is made from uh, carboxylic acid monomer and alcohol dicarboxylic and diol monomers. Question 38. The formula of five compounds are listed, as we can see from one to five, which compound are in the same homologous series. We have three compounds here having the function, the same function group, which is OH. The three compounds are alcohol. Compound two, three, and five are, have the same homologous series because they have the same function group. So the answer is B. Question 39. Propane react with Chlorine. Propane is an alkane that reacts with chlorine. Which statement about this reaction is correct? In the reaction of alkane with chlorine, ultraviolet light used to provide the activation energy. This is correct. In the substitution reaction, ultraviolet light is needed to provide the activation energy. It is not addition reaction, so statement 2 is wrong. One of the products is CH3, CH2, Cl, and this is not chloropropane it is chloroethane so also statement three is wrong one of the product is uh, hydrogen chloride this is correct so we have one and four are correct and the answer is b uh, question 40 which statement about chromatography is correct it is not possible for two different substances to have the same rf value it happens so it is possible it is only possible to use chromatography on substances which have a color. Uh, chromatography can be used for colorless substances like amino acids and sugars. That's why we are using locating agent to, uh, to detect the, the colorless spots and by changing it into colored spots. It is possible to use chromatography on colorless substances by using locating agent uh, as we've just explained. So statement C is correct. The R if a value of a substance is the distant travel by the solvent divide the distant travel by the substance. This is wrong. The uh, correct R if a value is the distance travel by the substance divided by the distance traveled by the solvent. So the correct answer is C. Here we come to the end of our exam. Like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive all the updates. Comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.